ladies and gentlemen, welcome in. Today, I wanted to rank every single dome in the United States uh, based on how much I like it, how good it is. These are my personal rankings from worst to first. And the only rules is it has to be a fixed closed roof. They can have windows. You can see all of the domes I'm going to be ranking. There's a total of 13. And let's kick it off with the worst dome here in 2023, and I do have to pick on it. It is Idaho State University and Holt Arena. A lot of these that are lower on the list will be kind of obscure college football teams. And when it comes to this one, I just think the exterior is extremely ugly. I do have to give Idaho State credit. They've got a very nice renovated interior. You can see photos of it. There was construction happening. I saw last April when I was researching this, and you guys know the uh, hours and hours I pour into researching these videos. It is inspirational. But Idaho State, it's tough. There's got to be a dome that comes in last. And it is that one. I will give them credit. They do have a little window there. I do not think they have renovated the window yet, though. So maybe when they do add the window and add natural light, I'll move them up a little bit. But right now, they're at 13. At number 12, it is the Dakota Dome. So there's another one. This is in South Dakota. They recently got a renovation. Really, I'm not a big fan of the new roof design that they have. You would figure if we're going to be renovating a stadium, you're going to have some incorporation of a window, natural light. I would nickname this dome the Dungeon. It just looks so dark, the exterior of it. It looks like you're going into like some type of demon or something. It's just very, very dark, industrial. So for me, it comes in at number 12. But they do have some exclusive suites. You've got a little TV there. Wow. That is brand new technology. You've got you got to give them some credit for that. That comes in at number 12. At number 11, it is the famous Kibble Dome located in Idaho. This is Idaho, uh, not Idaho State. Boy, Idaho's really, they really love their domes, but you can see this one, the reason it's up a little bit over Idaho State, you do have the the pretty nice see-through area there that allows natural light in. Also, it looks like they built up their lower bowl to add a little upper club area with some exclusive club seating. That's another aspect that I like. The roof design is just hideous. It looks like the inside of one of those Amazon warehouse sweatshops. So that's not great. But overall, this is a beloved dome in college football. It is a legendary place, and you know what? I heard they're trying to possibly host the college football playoff here. If they get a big expansion, maybe it happens. Maybe it does. There's a rumor going around that that's going to happen. At number 10, it's the Fargo Dome in North Dakota with North Dakota State. We remember Carson Wentz, Trey Lance. They win every single year. Really, really good pedigree. I do have to say... This is North Dakota State, really missed opportunity. I was actually thinking of moving this dome down on my list, even though it's kind of like the most built up of the smaller domes. I was thinking of moving it down because what's with the color of the seating? Your North Dakota State make the seating dark green. It would match it so well. Maybe it has to do with like I don't know, but it, but it is to me the seating is just really weird that they went with, you know, that it's blue and red, but it is a bigger dome. You've got to give it credit for that. Don't really love that there's no natural light and you would think with North Dakota State winning so much, maybe a renovation is in the works, maybe they'll put in some type of natural light window or maybe a new roof that has some type of natural light. Right now, I will say, due to the seating, due to the crazy atmosphere, how loud it gets in there, the winning pedigree, that all goes into it. That factors into a dome's legacy. So I'm going to give it the number 10 spot on my list. At number 9, now we're kind of getting into the bigger ones that have legitimate capacity. It is the Dome at America Center, better known as the Edward Jones Dome, which is where the St. Louis Rams played before they moved. This one is really brutal. It's very old. They were actually thinking about doing a renovation to it that would enable more natural light into it. 
They do have a few windows above the upper deck, but there's just really not a lot of natural light and just the seating configuration, the way it's shaped, it is very old. This looks like the interior seating. If you look at FedEx Field before they had all those, you know, ridiculous renovations to their upper deck. Before the renovations, this is like a carbon copy of what FedEx Field looked like. And FedEx Field was not good even before the so-called renovations, which really weren't even renovations anyways. But this, the design is just really, really dated. At, and it's currently called the Dome at America Center. You know, it's located in St. Louis. I don't know if I really like that name. It is what it is. It hosts it hosts XFL games now, I believe, but it comes in at number nine on the rankings. At number eight, it is the Alamo Dome. So this one, it's best known. I'll, I'll give the Alamo Dome credit. They've hosted NBA games. The NBA game a few years ago, Spurs Warriors set an attendance record. It's amazing for hosting the Final Four. I really think it should host a Final Four like every five years. What it is, is it's the seating setup. It fits like a glove for whatever reason. I'm guessing it's because it's like a scrunched in dome, but but it works really well and you do have the extended seating aspect of what the Final Four is rather than like NRG Stadium hosting the Final Four or some of these other bigger super stadiums to where the upper deck is just so far away from the action. Uh, but just taking a look at the Alamo Dome, Really don't love the upper deck design, like where it's cut off. I mean, I guess that's, you know, a unique aspect of it, but it just looks really industrial. It does host the Alamo Bowl, and I will say, there's been some pretty crazy Alamo Bowls over the years. This place originally built to try and get an NFL expansion team. That never happened, so they've been forced to kind of reevaluate and pivot and, and host XFL games, and they're the home for UTSA, which isn't great because UTSA is a smaller school, and you're going to be dealing with a lot of empty seats when you have a capacity like that. Either way, the Alamo Dome comes in at number eight on my list. At number seven, it is the Trop, Tropicana Field. Uh, you know, this stadium has been talked about uh, to death on this channel. There's really not much to say at this point. I will make a note. The way that the Trop installed their roof, it makes it to where it's so hard to like modernize the roof and make it more see-through. I think that's one of the big downfalls of Tropicana Field. There's like this technology that you can do with roofs, even that have that like tent feel to them. The Carrier Dome did it. The Metro Dome did it. You can make it so it's see-through. And Tropicana Field is just, the roof is just so messed up. It, it's kind of like lit up, but it's just, it is what it is at this point. You know, baseball indoors is really tough. Baseball indoors without any windows or natural light. It's it's impossible, man. It's brutal. And Tropicana Field, one of the worst stadiums in the MLB. I, I definitely think the Coliseum is worse because at least the Trop is designed for baseball. But the Trop, to me, really, really bad. It comes in at number seven on the list. At number six, it is the Carrier Dome. They got a brand new roof. And th this was the design that I was talking about. You can see... It does let in natural light. This roof is not nearly as good as the one they installed at the Metrodome. The one that they had installed at the Metrodome was really elite. But this one, it works too. You can see the paneling, how it's like see-through. It allows for the light to shine in. And then they do have a modernized four-sided scoreboard above it as well. The roof from the exterior kind of looks weird, if I'm going to be honest. But with the Carrier Dome, it's not just the football aspect of it. When you've got Duke in town and it's Duke-Syracuse, if it's Syracuse, North Carolina, and they have like the extended seating all the way down the line, that is such an amazing atmosphere for college basketball. I don't care if it looks ridiculous. It is amazing. That goes into me ranking the Carrier Dome a little bit more respectively because the atmosphere during the big games is really good. When Syracuse is playing those non-conference games against bad teams, it is pretty rough. 
you're dealing with a lot of empty seats, but that is what it is. It has an amazing atmosphere. And then, you know, Syracuse football, for as bad as they've been, they've had a few decent years. They, they've had some crazy Friday night wins against Clemson where the place has gotten really loud because it is the only major, you know, fixed, closed, dome college football stadium when it comes to Power 5. So th that's a unique aspect of it. I mean, it's really like the seating configuration. It's just the two-deck approach, similar to the Metro Dome, similar to the Pontiac Silver Dome. But it is unique in the sense it's very rare for there to be a college football big-time program to have a fixed roof. So it comes in at number six. At number five, it is the Caesar Superdome. So all of these top five are all NFL stadiums. The Superdome is right now in the midst of a three-year renovation where they're going to be adding some exclusive seating. I really like the Superdome, even though it is the only stadium in the NFL that does not let in any natural light. That is a true fact. But the seating design, very, very nice. I like the upper deck wraparound where it kind of jets up and, it, and it's different sizes going all around the entire thing. Also, the lighting is really cool. The circular lighting in the center uh, except during the Super Bowl, I guess. But, but no, it is actually hosting a Super Bowl, I believe in 2025. And then the exterior of it. Oh no, this coming year it's hosting a Super Bowl, 2024. Love the exterior lighting. It's a really cool looking dome from the outside. I just love the look of it. And then the inside, you can see it's hosted huge events, WrestleMania. It is very solid. I've got it at number five. At number four, I am going with Ford Field. So this was probably my hardest ranking. I was really considering putting the Superdome in front of Ford Field. But I do like the, the close aspect of Ford Field. It's just two decks. And then the other side is all suites. You do have some natural light shining in from the top with a nice little window there. So Ford Field, the most unique thing about it, really doesn't feel like a crazy, grandiose NFL stadium, but it gets the job done. I like the seating color that matches the Lions colors. It's a pretty, pretty nice stadium, and it just it, it fits Detroit. It's smaller, but it works, and it does work really well. It's another stadium that can host a good Final Four because there's no crazy bad view seating uh, at Ford Field because it is so small. It comes in at number four. At number three, uh, these top three are all NFL super stadiums. At number three, it is the Death Star Allegiant Stadium located in Las Vegas, Nevada. There's really not much to say. I love the seating design. You've got the light gray. You've got the black. You've got a very modern looking you know, seating configuration, You, the window, the torch. The only real negative to Allegiant Stadium is when you look at it from an aerial shot and they've got one of those roofs that is like see-through or at least a little bit. When you look at it from the top, it looks really bad. I don't know why. Uh, if I was, you know, designing Allegiant, I would have tried to have made sure looking at it through the top, it would have been more of a... Uh, glass type glow rather than it, it looks like one of the like the metrodome type fight it looks like one of the older roof like fibers those blow up tent like roofs that's the kind of feel I get when I'm looking at it the exterior around the stadium I would probably rank it number one well number two in the NFL number one is US Bank the exterior but Allegiant Stadium, the exterior of it, it's a it's a Death Star and it's got that beautiful lighting that goes around Oh, it's amazing. And then there's the big window there that opens. It comes in at number three on the dome ranking list. At number two, it's SoFi Stadium, the most expensive stadium in history. Home to two NFL teams, the massively high price tag, Inglewood, California, the color changing roof, the see-through roof, all the natural light, they actually make it to where it can filter in wind into the stadium. You've got the ring center scoreboard that, see, that, that you can see on both sides. This place is beautiful and it's going to be around for the next 40, 50 years. It's going to host probably five or six Super Bowls. It's already hosted one and I'm sure it'll get another one pretty soon. There's really not much else I can say about SoFi. It is beautiful. They've also got the man-made lake with the waterfall right in the front. It comes in at number two on my list. And then number one, 
Uh, the best fixed roof, dome, stadium. It has to be the Star Destroyer. That's the nickname I give. U.S. Bank Stadium. Uh, just the exterior of it. It looks like an alien spaceship. I love it. And then the interior. Very, very modern design. I love the purple seats. Really fits the character there. Minnesota Vikings colors. And it just really, really nice window that allows a ton of natural light in. And also the roof is at least semi-see-through that will also allow some natural light and some sun to reflect onto the field. U.S. Bank, uh, right now, probably the best stadium in the NFL. At least it's top three, I would say. And it really only costs them like $1.2 billion. I understand some of that is... You know, you're not building in California, so it's going to be cheaper. Uh, but that is a pretty remarkable price for this crazy super stadium. It already has hosted a Super Bowl. But guys, those are my 2023 domed stadium rankings here in America. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description. I'm, of course, the Depressed Ginger. Thank you for watching.